Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at doing some calculations uh, with numbers that are in standard form. So uh, we're going to have a look at multiplying and then later on dividing. I'm going to focus on multiplying first, but before we crack on with that, just a little recap of some of our indices. So hopefully you've already looked at the indice video part one, where we see that if you have the base numbers here the same, in this case tens, and we're times in them, what we can do is we can add the powers. So to simplify that, it would be 10 to the power of 7. And the other one we need to bear in mind again is if you have the same bases, but you're dividing, you actually take the powers away. So 6 uh, take away 4 is 2. So we're going to rely on these rules from our uh, indices video when doing the standard form. So let's crack on. So when we're multiplying two numbers in standard form, so that's in standard form and that's in standard form. So if you haven't looked at the standard form video, make sure you look at that. Um, we can do something a little bit clever here. You can obviously take these numbers out of standard form and work out what the real number is, work out what the real number is and times it, or you can do this little trick that I'm now about to show you. Now, because we're timesing, the order doesn't matter. So for example, two times three times four is 24, or four times two times three is 24, and so on and so forth. So the order when you're timesing doesn't matter, in which case I'm gonna change it to this. I'm gonna take my two, keep it the same, I'm going to times that by the 3, which is over there. Then I'm going to have my 10 to the power of 2 times by 10 to the power of 3. So I've just changed the order. I'll pick that one, then I'll pick that one, then I'll pick that one, then I'll pick that one. Why is that useful? Well, 2 times 3 is just 6. Then I've got my times, and then I can use my rule that I did up here, where I'm just going to add the powers. So it's 10 to the power of 5. And that's it, you've done it. The answer is 6 times 10 to the power of 5. Now sometimes, when you do this little trick, your answer here might not be in standard form. If it isn't, just tweak it, just like I did in my previous uh, uh, standard form video, to make sure it is. But in this particular case, happy days, we're okay. Let's have a look at this example. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to take this number, take this number and rearrange the order. So 5.4 times 2, then I'm going to do my times 10 to the power of 4 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So 2 times 5.4 is going to give me 10.8. And then I've got my times. And again, I'm, I'm times and these, so I'm going to add the powers. So 4 plus minus 3 is 10 to the power of, uh, what am I doing? Is 10 to the power of 1. Okay. Now, this is not in standard form, because this number here is not between 1 and 10. So this is what I was talking about up here. You need to tweak it. So this number needs to be between 1 and 10. So it needs to be 1.08. So I've moved the decimal point there. So to go from this one to this one, what I've done is I've divided by 10, which means to keep it the same number on this side, I need to times it by 10. So if I've got 10 to the power of 1 and times it by 10, that's going to give me 10 to the power of 2. If I'm times it by 10, I add 1 to the power. If I'm dividing by 10, I take 1 away from the power. So to go from here to here, I've divided by 10. So here I need to times by 10, which means adding 1 to the power. So that's now in standard form, and you've answered the question. So that's a little trick for multiplying. Let's have a look at dividing. Now it's very similar, but it, need, it involves a little bit of uh, rewriting it slightly. So I'm going to write it as 3.6 times 10 to the power of 5. Now this time I'm dividing, so I'm going to write it as a fraction like so just makes it a little bit easier to see and therefore solve. So this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to block that off and go 3.6 divided by 1.2. Well, that's nice. It's 3. Then I've got my times 10. And just like we used our rule over here, if you're dividing, you take the powers away. So 5 take away 2 is 3. And again, check it's in standard form. Yes, it is, because that's between 1 and 10. And that's a nice uh, integer or whole number. Happy days, no worries. Let's have a look at this one then. So again, I'm going to write it as a fraction. So 3 times 
10 to the power of 6 divided by 4 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So again, I'm just going to do 3 divided by 4. Now you can leave it as a fraction initially, which is 3 quarters, but we need it as a number. So what is 3 quarters as a decimal? You should know that's 0 0.75 times 10, and again, we take the powers away. Now, I've chosen this example to illustrate a point here. 6, take away minus 3. I'm taking away a negative. And when you take away a negative, hopefully you remember, you add it. So it'll be 10 to the power of 9. And again, check that your answer is in standard form. Well, this isn't, because that's below 1. It needs to be between 1 and 10. So I'm going to change it to be 7.5 times 10, and I need to work out what the power is. So how have I gone from this one to this one? So I've times that by 10. So if I've times this one by 10, I need to do the opposite on this side and divide by 10. So if I divide by 10, I'm taking one away from the power. So it'll be 10 to the power of 8. Okay, so there's some examples of how to uh, times and divide. I'm just going to very quickly show you how to type this in on your calculator. So if we take this one here, you literally type it in exactly the same. So bracket 2. Now when it says the times 10, there's this button down here, times 10 to the power of x. If you press that, and then you can put the power of 2, close your bracket, times, open your bracket, 3. Again, times 10 and it's to the power of 3, so close your bracket and press equals. It doesn't give you it in standard form, but what it does do is give you the answer, and then obviously you can put that into standard form, uh, like I showed you to do in the part 1 uh, video on standard form. Okay, so, uh, exactly the same thing for all of these. Um, it said you'd obviously just use divide in here, but you just use that button to get the times 10 to the power of. So that's how you do it with a calculator. So, that's multiplying and dividing. Adding and subtracting is a little bit different. So let's have a look. So I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. And it's entirely up to you which, uh, which one you use and which one you find easier. Now, I'm going to show you the, probably the simpler way to do this, which is just to take these numbers out of standard form. So I'm going to do that with this one first. So 3.2 times 10 to the power of 4. So I've got my 3.2. I'm going to times it by 10 four times. So if I times it by 10 once, I get 32. Times it again, 320. And again, and again. So I've times 3.2 by 10 four times to give myself 32,000. And I plus, and I've got 7.3. I need to times this by 10 three times. So once would be 73, twice would be 730, and once more, 7,300. Okay? Once you've got these two numbers, you just put them into a column and add them. Like so. So 0 add 0 is obviously 0, 0, 0 add 3 is 3, 2 add 7 is 9, and then obviously then you have the 3. So again, this doesn't give you the number in standard form. What you can do is once you have your answer is you can put it back into standard form. So of course, the number between 1 and 10 would be 3.93 times 10, and then you need to work out how many times will I times 3.93 by 10 to get back to my original. Well, if the decimal point is there, I'd have to times it by 10 once, twice, three times, four times. So it would be to the power of four. Okay? So hopefully you could spot why you can't just do 3.2 add 7.3. Because when you actually use the column method, they don't line up. And the reason why they don't line up is because the power of 10 is different. 10 to the power of four, 10 to the power of three, which means they don't line up. So the three does not line up with the seven because of that reason there, which is why it's not as easy. However, you can still do it with the numbers in standard form, which is what I'm now about to show you. So that's one way of doing it. This is another way. What you need to do is make the 
uh, power of 10 the same. So 10 to the power of 4, 10 to the power of 3. Now the best way to do this is to pick the biggest power. In this case, it's 10 to the power of 4. That's bigger than that one. So I'm going to keep that one the same. 3.2 times uh, 10 to the power of 4. And I'm going to change this one to be 10 to the power of 4. Now, if I make that 10 times bigger, I need to make this 10 times smaller to keep it the same, which is going to give me uh, 0.73. Now these are the same, I can now just add these because they're going to line up correctly. So I'm going to have 3.2 and 0 0.73 and I can add these together. And I'm just going to add the zero in here to make the calculation a bit nicer. So zero add three is three, two add seven is nine. Don't forget the decimal point, and then three. So I'm going to have my 3.93 times 10, because both of them are times 10 to the power of four, times 10 to the power of four. And as you can see, I get the same answer. It's just that one might be a little bit easier to do, uh, less likely to make a mistake, but you can do it by manipulating the numbers there. So I'm going to do the same thing this time for a takeaway. I'm going to take them out, and I'm going to show you this way as well. So the first thing we need to do is this method. If I take a 9.6 times 10 to the power of 5 out of standard form, so I'm going to times 9.6 by 10 five times. So if I do it once, 96, times it by 10 twice, times it by 10 three times, four times, five times. So I have 960,000. Take away, and again, I'm going to take this number out. So it's times 2.2 .2 by 10 three times. So times it by 10 once, then twice, and then three times will give me 2,200. Line it up in a grid to do the subtraction. Like so. Well, zero take away zero, zero, zero take away zero, zero, zero take away two, can't do it. I need to borrow one. Can't borrow one from here, so I'm going to go over here and borrow that one and call that five, which means that's now a ten. So I can borrow that one, call that a nine, now call that a ten. Ten take away two is eight. Nine take away two is seven. Five take away nothing is five. And then I've got my 9. So again, this doesn't give you the answer in standard form, but you can easily put it into standard, standard form. So it needs to be 9.578. So this number is between 1 and 10 times by 10. And I need to work out what the power is. So how many times do I have to times by this by 10 to get back to the original? Well, if the decimal point is there, times by 10 once, twice, three times, four times, five times to get back to the original, okay? So that's one way of doing it. Now I'm going to do it the slightly trickier uh, way of doing it here. So again, the 10th to the power of 5, 10th to the power of 3, they're different. I'm going to change them to the biggest one, which is 10th to the power of 5. So 9.6 stays the same, times 10 to the power of 5. That stays the same, so that's the bigger one. Take away, and then I'm going to change this one to be... 10 to the power of 5. Now, I've times by 10 twice to go from 10 to the power of 3 to 10 to the power of 5. I've times by 10 and times by 10, which means to keep it the number the same, I need to divide by 10 and divide by 10, which will give me 0 0.022. So divide by 10, divide by 10. So now, oh, I missed my times. Now they have both the same times by 10 to the power of 5, I can just subtract these two numbers. So 9.6, 0 0.022, this time we're taken away, adding my zeros to help me. So it's basically the same over here, can't do that, can't do that, so I need to borrow one, call that a 10, call that a 9, now I can call that a 10, 10 take away 2 is 8, 9 take away 2 is 7, 5 take away nothing is, ob oops, is obviously 5, decimal point and 9. So 9.578 times 10 to the power of 5, because that's what I changed them to. And again, that is already in standard form. So again, I'll just quickly show you the calculator. There's no difference here. Bracket 3.2, use this button here, times 10 to the power of x. 
and it's to the power of 4, close bracket, plus 7.3, this button here, times 10 to the power of x, uh, to the power of 3, close the bracket, press equals, and again, you get the answer like I did here, then you can just convert it to standard form. So hopefully that helps explain how to do calculations with numbers in a standard form. Thanks for watching, guys.